Greetings, everyone. P. Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to pick 21 of my 31 favorite hard rock and heavy metal albums of the 80s. We are counting down each and every day here in May of 2023. Start with number 31, working our way to number one, which will be revealed on the 31st of this month. So uh, each and every day. Another pick. It's a hard thing to do. Pick out 31 heavy music favorites from a decade that was filled with great heavy metal albums that I love quite a bit. So, uh, yeah, 31 out of two, 300 that I, you know, that were more. That's kind of the, the original list I had was probably about that. There's certainly many, many more. But uh, and I know it was just as tough for all of you watching. So today, on day, or pick 21, this is the second album from this band from Denmark. Released September 7th, 1984, produced by Henrik Lund, released on Roadrunner Records, and recorded at Easy Sound Recording in Copenhagen, Denmark. Of course I'm talking about Don't Break the Oath, from Merciful Fate, one of the great uh, heavy metal bands of all time, such an important band in the evolution of uh, extreme metal, but a band that had a and still has a very charismatic and kind of evil-looking guy singing for them in King Diamond. Twin lead guitars, Michael Denner, Hank Sherman, right? That's uh, probably one of the most amazing heavy metal guitar duos of all time. And, you know, their first two albums, so influential. Pretty much, you know, musically, straight-up heavy metal with certainly some prog influences, but uh, obviously the vocals are over the top. You know, the high-pitched shrieking of King Diamond, the falsetto, right? His kind of mid-level kind of whatever you want to call that, right? Uh, definitely one of the most unique singers <clears throat> ever to face uh, a heavy metal stage. And just such a cool band, musically speaking. So, and again, very influential, influencing the whole extreme metal scene, you know, black metal for sure, even though you listen to the music of Merciful Fate, and it really doesn't sound anything like that, but as far as, like, lyrical themes go, and the, you know, the, the kind of the vocal presence, right, but uh, it's from a musical perspective, right, just classic heavy metal, I always, to me, <clears throat> I always uh, equate, like, the music of Merciful Fate as kind of like a classic mid-70s era Judas Priest, like, kind of kicked up a notch, you know, amping up the complexity, right? Just loads of great technical riffs and blazing solos, right? You got the kind of like the little bits of like neoclassical and uh, like kind of like the German pentatonic thing going on. You know, Michael Denner has a lot in common with Michael Schenker and, uh, you know, the, the wilder playing of Hank Sherman. Uh, just a great, great band. So their first two albums, legendary. Melissa and Don't Break the Oath. Uh, my number 21 here is Don't Break the Oath. Let's talk a little bit about the band and the album, right? So, of course, King Diamond on vocals also played some keyboards on the album. Hank Sherman, Michael Denner, who I just mentioned, on co-guitars. Timmy Hansen on bass. Kim Ruse, or Rose on drums. Awesome stuff here. It's classic tracks. Uh, you know, I have... Uh, this was actually the first Merciful Fate album I ever bought. And then I went and got Melissa shortly afterwards because I love this so much. But I remember the first time I heard this album, I was like, holy shit. I don't know whether I'm completely amazed or scared shitless, right? Because it's just this, at the time, this was pretty kind of shocking, crazy stuff. Now you listen to the early music of Merciful Fate and you think, okay, you know, it's pretty straightforward stuff. But back at the time, you know, we didn't have Mayhem and we didn't have Gorgoroth and we didn't have all the, you know, the more extreme stuff that came afterwards. This at the time, this and Venom, right? And early Slayer, that was fairly extreme at the time. Celtic Frost, right? Those type of bands all kind of hitting at the same time so uh yeah so we have you know a dangerous meeting which just kicks off the album in fine fashion love that song you have nightmare desecration of souls in their holy awesome. just who could ever hit those high notes right just crazy uh night of the unborn one of my favorite songs on the album just has a crazy guitar riff at the beginning of it uh then on side two of the vinyl you have the oath you have the amazing very accessible gypsy right gypsy's a lot of fun very kind of catchy uh you got welcome princess of hell to one far away and then of course the big closer come come to the sabbath just great great stuff here uh and then of course uh, if you get the reissue you get uh, death kiss a demo version of death kiss right um but yeah just amazing amazing album just complex musically just absolutely killer killer guitar work 
Uh, and then, you know, King's just weird array of different vocal styles and things like that. So just a, a very headbanging, fun, ch but chilling album all at the same time. Um, love this, love this to death. As far as chart positions go, again, it's not a big seller, right? No surprise there. Uh, but this did make it to number 66 on the German chart when it was released, the top 100 album chart strangely enough right but uh, no charting impact anywhere else but more importantly again we've talked about this from time to time on this series already sometimes it's not only about the charting positions right or the the sales uh, the influence of this is, has been massive uh, both merciful fate the first merciful fate albums just so influential and so many other bands to follow and to listeners themselves, right? Uh, you know, how many of us, you know, whether you like this sort of thing or not, the impact of Merciful Fate, pretty damn strong. So that is my pick for today. Pick number 21. Will we see another Merciful Fate on this list? Hmm. I'm not saying. Anyway, uh... If you are a fan, let us know what you think of Don't Break the Oath down in the comments below. And uh, also, please list your pick for today. Pick number 21. We're not quite halfway through the month yet. We're getting there. So uh, lots of good stuff to come. Lots of good stuff to come. So stay tuned tomorrow for pick number 20. And visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. All together, all the damn time. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And click on that notification bell so you get alert of all of our content as it posts. And please do hit the like button before you leave. Also down below, we've got the links to our Ko-Fi page for channel donations as well as our merch page. So thank you all in advance for that. And uh, let's see, what do we got? Today is Thursday. Of course, it's Thursday. It's the Monster's Den. What a perfect way to segue from merciful fate into the monster's den right so that's happening tonight uh the crew and i will be talking about and well tala tala wants to have something to say can you hear her squeaking over there hey tala right you're gonna watch the monster's den tonight are you you like giallo films i know you do anyway we're talking about our favorite giallo films tonight so of course those are the uh, the great italian pre I guess you can call them proto slasher films, right? So these kind of murder mystery thriller slasher horror films, uh, exploitation kind of just weird mix of uh, killers with black gloves and black hats and masks and knives and all sorts of other weapons, killing lovely ladies and, and uh, fearful gentlemen and uh, lots of kind of red herrings and who's the killer why are they doing it all that sort of thing lots of sex a lot of lots of nudity all that kind of stuff that's what we're talking about our favorite giallo films tonight so stay tuned for that here on see you tranquility on the monsters den tonight and of course mark pop off back tomorrow morning at the fun house with myself and we've got coming up on sunday i will be ranking the albums of the solo catalog of the voice of rock himself mr glenn hughes so that's coming up on sunday and then of course uh, next week we've got in the Prague seat. We've got a fun show for you next week. We're going to be doing an album study, ripping apart, taking apart, discussing, turning upside down and over. Yeah, Katala can't wait. Uh, Jethro Tull is a passion play that's coming up next week. So uh, stay tuned for that. We've also got the UK connection next week. We've got another fun, fun episode of our look at three AOR melodic rock albums that's coming up next week and uh, so yeah all sorts of stuff happening here on the channel Wednesday new album review day we've got let's see new new one from uh, Arian Lukasen we've got uh, the new winger the new Tanith uh, new Tigers of Pantang Smoky Mirror man, all sorts of other stuff M Opus these are not all going to be next week but over the next couple of Wednesdays so uh, lots of good stuff coming up here on the channel I am Pete Pardo thanks for watching everybody see you tomorrow morning with pick number 20 till then take care bye bye